The Mixcraft mixer has a few hidden tricks up its sleeve to help you quickly mix your tracks. So we're going to look at the built-in channel strip plus some routing options, and then we'll look at how to focus on various tracks in your mix. So if you don't have your mixer already open at the bottom here, click down on mixer there and we have it. But for this video and for your mixing stage, you might want to increase the size of the mixer and you can do that by clicking on this line here and then dragging it up and that's how high it can go here. Another option is to undock it and then you can click this to make it full screen. And then you have this nice full screen mixer and you can use the space bar on your computer keyboard to start playback. So in previous videos, we've already gone over our basic volume and pan controls in here. Plus you've probably done some muting and soloing and maybe added some effects at this point, but you've likely noticed that there's some other things in here like compressor drive. We also have an EQ here. Plus there's some hidden settings that you don't see right now and we can enable those in a bit. But right now I just wanna take a look at what we have in front of us. So I'm going to go to this bass dirt track and what I've done here is I've just created an EQ and I've taken off all of the low end of this bass and this is like all of the higher stuff. So I wanna try this drive setting out and it's turned off right now and you can turn it on by clicking there. But if we just adjust this, it turns it on automatically. Now, unfortunately in the recording of this bass, I had a bad ground on my bass guitar and you can hear that in there. Let's just make sure we don't hear that when we're increasing the sound here. All right, so that's okay like that, but it still needs some work. Now I'm going to add this compressor here and this is just a one knob compressor. We turn it clockwise like this and it's going to increase the amount of compression that we're adding to this track. Now it's supposed to have gain matching built in so we don't have to worry about that. Let's just take it for a test drive. So now I need to bring the volume down a bit because the drive added some volume to this. And it's also brought out some of the honkiness in this bass guitar. So let's use this basic EQ that we have here and maybe bring down some of the mids. That's not too bad. We're going to leave this for now. And we got to see this basic EQ in action. And if I wanted to do some more EQ, but I wanted more controls than just the high, mid, low, which are nice. These are excellent basic EQs here. We've got a hidden parametric EQ. If we click on this gear icon here, you can see we have some mixer panel preferences and in here, there's some added settings that we can access. So you can see right here, we have the parametric EQ. Let's open that up. And now it's added a really nice parametric EQ to every single track. And this is a channel strip now. All right, so I have this parametric EQ kind of set up for this acoustic. Let's listen to it on and off.
adds a little more character to it. And there's still some other things that we can look at in this hidden menu over here. So another thing that you may want to access is this channels. And this can come in handy if you have stereo channels set up because you can make them mono or you can listen to your master track in mono so you can hear what your mix is going to sound like in mono. So that's pretty cool because you do want to test your mixes mono just to hear what they sound like, see if anything really disappears, because if something disappears when you go to mono, you may want to check on it unless it's something that you've pushed all the way to the sides. You kind of understand those are going to disappear when they're pushed all the way to each side. And then also in here, you can swap your channels left and right. And that can be handy if you start to get a little bit of ear fatigue from your mix. Maybe you're not hearing it right because you've been working on it so long. You can just swap the channels and then continue on mixing and it kind of will sound new. There's the stereo width here so you can make it wide or you can narrow the mix. And also you can do phase invert for left and right channels. So that's a pretty cool little hidden gem in there. And you don't have to have it open all the time. You can close that down. Same with your parametric EQ. If you set it up and you're happy with how everything is, you can hide that because it does take up a lot of space on the screen. So we'll hide that now. Then in here, you can also see frequency view. And that's going to add like another little graph under here. We can look at that. All right, so you can see that little graph. If you like it, you can leave it open. And another thing you'll see in here that is enabled is sends, but we don't actually see sends over here anywhere. So let's have a look at how we're going to add some sends. And I'm just going to close down the mixer here. We'll go up to track, add track, and then we want to add a send track. So let's increase this again. We now have send one and master track over the side here. And you can see up here, it says send one. We can rename this to whatever. I'm going to call this Vox verb. And this will be my vocal reverb because I do have a reverb directly on my vocal and I don't want it there. I'm going to drag it over to Vox verb. And now it's over there. And what I want to do is set this to 100%. When you have an effect like a reverb or a delay on a send, you want it to be 100%. That way you're not just increasing the loudness of whatever you're sending in there, you're actually affecting it. So now we can control how much of our lead vocal we want to send to Vox Verb over here. So let's just solo our lead Vox here. And we'll see how much we need to send over to our Vox verb. So I'll press play and then I'll increase this and we'll hear what sounds good. Running high on grapefruit and rose, agitated by the white cup perk that flows, bemused by cyclic tasks and the mundane, where my star shine, we'll be there. And I'm thinking, and I'm thinking. All right, I kind of like that right there. And you'll notice that we can actually EQ on the send track as well. And you might want to take away some of the lows on a reverb because they can start to add up if you're doing a lot of sends. And if I wanted, I could send some of the backing vocals or doubled vocals into that reverb. I can send guitars into that reverb if I think they would sound good, and they might. Running high on. Grapefruit and rose, agitated by the white cup perk that flows, bemused by cyclic tasks and the mundane, when the stars shine, we'll be there. And I'm thinking... That's all right, right there. I might just dial it down a bit, because I just want that effect to be slight on there. I might send these to a different send, and you can send things to multiple sends. So that is a send. Now let's have a look at another thing that we can do here, and that's some routing options that we have in here. So what we want to do for that is 
We'll go up to track here and we want to create a submix track. So I'll click on that. And now we have a submix and unlike ascend, the submix shows up right in our regular mixer over here with all of our tracks. And you can also see the submix and our sends over on this side here. Now I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it drum sub. And I'm actually going to drag it up here because I want it to be at the top of my drum kit here. There we go. And I'm going to send all of my drums to drum sub. So let's go back into our mixer and there's our nice drum sub. How do we send everything into there? Well, you can see now up at the top here, we have output options. So let's go to our kick. And instead of having it sent to our master track, we'll click there and we're going to send it to drum sub. And we'll do the same for all of our drums that we have in here. All right, now we have all of our drums sent to drum sub. Let's give this a listen. So it didn't change the sound of our drums at all, but it now gives us one channel strip here that we can control things like mute solo. So we can mute all of our drums. We can solo all of our drums. We can add EQ or compression and drive to our drums. Let's try adding a little bit of drive. It might sound good on this song. So yeah, I like that drive on there. A little bit of this drive goes a long way and it does increase the loudness of whatever track you're using it on. So you need to adjust the fader after you've added a little bit of drive on there. And if you don't want to use submixes, but maybe you want to focus on a few of your tracks all at once, maybe you have a ton of tracks in here and it's a little cluttered, but you just want to focus on your drums. So you can see over to the side here, we have our track lists. And let's just click on none. Now let's click on drum sub and we can see our drum sub and we can click on all of our drums in here. And now we can just focus on our drums. It's not a cluttered mixer. We're just looking at our drums. We can still hear everything. High on and rose. We're just not seeing it because right now we want to focus on drums. And then we can click none again. Maybe we just want to look at all of our vocal tracks. So you could just click and look at all of your vocal tracks and maybe you want to blend your vocals with the drums. So let's just add the drum sub so I can easily click on my lead vocal, solo it, solo our drums. Running high on grapefruit and rose, agitated by the white cup. So that's not too bad. I don't need to focus on these anymore and we can just click on all and we have everything. I don't like to have this preview track there. So I'm going to turn that one off, but we have all of our tracks back on the screen. Very easy to work with. All right. This song is really coming along. I think we might be ready to do a mix down and that's what we're going to look at in the next video.